Hello and welcome to the Daily Nebraskans Husker Hot Takes, a new weekly show that we're going to do before Nebraska football games where someone from the football beat, this week it's myself, senior sports editor Landon Wirt, is joined by someone else from the Daily Nebraskan staff to preview and discuss, and plus the best part, giving a prediction, the upcoming Husker football game. I am joined this week by assistant news editor Nick McConnell. Nick, hello, welcome. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Having a good day. So, yeah, excited to be here, especially first episode. I'm honored to be the inaugural non-football guest. It's exciting. It's awesome, for sure. I'm, of course, happy to have you. This should be fun. And Minnesota, Nebraska football's next opponent. This is the eighth week in a row, believe it or not, that there has been a Nebraska football game on a Saturday, the last game before the bye, uh, the Huskers currently sit at 3-4 and four before this Saturday's clash with PJ Flex Squad, who always seem to come in an important time for Husker football. A little bit of a history lesson, F- Scott Frost's first win as Nebraska's coach came against Minnesota in 2018. In 2019 and 2020, Nebraska was at critical junctures in its season and fell to Minnesota in season-defining losses. And now in 2021, Nebraska has an opportunity to get back to 500 before the bye week with four games of the regular season remaining. It should be an interesting one. Minnesota's a little bit shorthanded, but should be an interesting matchup at the former TCF Bank Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Nick, uh, what are your thoughts about this one? Yeah, I'm excited. Looking forward to it. It's interesting you mention... um that we haven't had a bye week because it didn't hit me until just now. I hadn't. I, I don't know that most, most Husker fans have thought about that, but I almost feel like I need a bye week. <laughs> I, I, this has been kind of an onslaught of a season, so many emotional ups and downs, and I, I need a week just to kind of like relax. So, but, but here we are. We've got another game this weekend. Uh, Minnesota's been an interesting team for me throughout the year, especially uh, I always find college football what-ifs pretty fun and I'm curious how different this team looks if certain things don't happen from an injury perspective particularly Mo Ibrahim Ibrahim I never never get that pronunciation correct but if I recall correctly he got hurt against Ohio State in like week one yep first game of the season and I think they're a profoundly different team with him on the field so I, I think um yeah, I'm curious to see how we shake out against them without him on the field. He's out for the season, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, this would be a very different game were he there. But uh, I, I'm actually – well, we'll get to predictions, but I'm, I'm certainly more confident than I would be were he playing. So. Right, yeah. Ibrahim's been a real pain in the side uh, for Nebraska in the last couple of matchups. Remember 2020 in the COVID-19 impacted game where Minnesota had 33 players out. He was still there, and he ran the ball very, very well and led Minnesota to victory. He did get injured against Ohio State in, I think, the second half of Week 1. And the bigger storyline from that is his backup, Trey Potts, who had been running the ball pretty well uh, in his shoes, is also out for the season. P.J. Fleck announced that on Monday. So Minnesota is without their two starting running backs, and it should make for a very, very interesting matchup. Uh, I don't really know what to make of Minnesota personally. They're been a, they've been a weird team in, as far as their ups and downs. They lost to Bowling Green at home as 31-point favorites. The offense hasn't quite been there in stretches, and now you're without your two running backs. So Minnesota, for me, has been a tough team to analyze and project, and they're in a bit of a weird spot uh, in P.J. Fleck's fifth season. I'm looking forward to the coaching matchup between Frost and Fleck. Uh, they've had some good battles, and Fleck's gotten the better of Frost in these last couple of years. Odds makers don't really know what to think of this game either. Nebraska's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. When I think of this game, it could range anywhere from the 56-7 to Northwesterning that happened a couple weeks ago to a hard-fought, neck-and-neck, down-to-the-wire game that we've seen in conference play. It's tough because of the uncertainties and unknowns on Minnesota for me to analyze it. I really don't know what's going to happen. I'm looking forward to seeing it myself live in Minneapolis on Saturday. But yeah, with all that being said and all the uncertainties on Minnesota's side and the Nebraska side that seems to be trending upwards despite the final result not being there, playing better week after week. uh, Nick, how do you see this game playing out on Saturday and what's your projection? Yeah, it's tricky. Um, I think you're right. This is two teams that both, when you look at it all one way, show a lot of promise, and when you look at it all another way, don't. Um, But I think it's interesting that dichotomy between um, 
oh man, it's going to be another hard fought close loss, or can we do to them what we did to Northwestern a couple weeks ago? I think it finishes somewhere in the middle of those two things. I think um, if if you made me nail it down, Huskers by seven. Give me give me some points. Give me a give me a give me oh, a number man. to a number. I think. Um, hmm. I have. Having been in the Big Ten a few years, I'm gonna say it's a low-scoring affair, um, unless you know it's like the Northwestern game and it breaks wide open. But if I had to bet, I'll say uh, 21-14 Nebraska. Yeah, I I I am in a similar score range myself. I do think that Nebraska is going to be able to open it up a little bit offensively, but I do think that 11 and that 11 a.m. kickoff is going to contribute, along with Nebraska's new offensive line, inserting Bryce Benhart, is going to contribute to a little bit of a sluggish start early on. I kind of think it'll be similar to last week's game against Michigan in that Nebraska opens things up in the second half a little bit. I like Nebraska 28, Minnesota 13. Uh, I'm not very high on the Golden Gophers this year, but this is a big game for them in terms of how they stand in the Big Ten. Nebraska really, really needs a win to get to 500, <laughs> desperately needs a win. Uh, and this is one of the opponents that, if Nebraska is to make a bowl game, it has to come out and beat. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for Nebraska to turn a corner in the second half and come away with a 28-13 victory. And yeah, that's how I see things. Any other thoughts on uh, this Saturday's game, Nick? Yeah, no, uh, looking forward to it. Wish it wasn't an 11 o'clock game. I think those are easy to get tired of. But uh, I am, you know, it's interesting. It feels like all of the last few weeks for four straight weeks now, we've said this is a must win. This is a must win. This is a must win. And when when you have the kind of season like we've had where the momentum is pendulum swinging, do you, I guess I'm curious to hear from you. Do you think that a win this weekend could bring momentum forward into that tough last four games? Yeah, Nebraska needs a win, certainly. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, getting to 4-4 four and four would be huge. 3-5 and five would make things really, really difficult to overcome in order to get to that six-win threshold for a bowl game. Minnesota is a team that Nebraska knows what it needs to do against them. I think a lot of the dichotomy this week and conversation has been around Nebraska needs to be physical, Nebraska needs to be disciplined. If Nebraska can do both of those things, they'll certainly be up for the game based on the recent history between the two schools. So it's pretty crucial. Uh, It's going to be really hard for Nebraska to make up three wins over the last four games on its schedule. It'd be a very, very difficult task. Um, so this that's what adds heightened importance to this. When you're a team that's struggling to get to that six-win threshold like Nebraska is, because of the schedule where it's had to play a lot of top ten teams, every game becomes the more all the more important, and that starts with this Saturday. So, yeah. So let me ask you right now, are we going to make it to that bowl game? Oh, that's <laughs> tough. Put me on the spot. I think if you had to pull a gun to my head right now <laughs> and say, give me an answer, which way is Nebraska going to do this thing? I think that Nebraska gets there. I think that this game is a win. I think that the Purdue game is a win. And I think that Nebraska is go- able to fight its demons and go into Camp Randall and beat Wisconsin. That'd we'll see nice. what happens, That'd but that nice. all starts this Saturday. So we'll find out at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Nick, thank you for joining us. I loved our little discussion and back and forth about not only the game, but also the ramifications for Husker football. And this has been the first episode of the Daily Nebraskans Husker Hot Takes. For Landon Wirt and Nick McConnell, signing off. Thanks, Landon.